Today's big news comes from Disney. First there was Disneyland, then Disney World, now Disney Neighborhoods. That's right, Disney is making another big play to get into the residential real estate business. Now, if you've been following the history of the Walt Disney Company, you'll know this is actually not something new for Disney. This goes way back to Walt himself. Remember, the heart of the Florida project, that thing that became the Walt Disney World Resort, was, say it with me now, the experimental prototype community of tomorrow. That Epcot wasn't a theme park. That was a residential real estate development. Yeah, there was a lot of commercial real estate in there. It was a big city. But the whole thing was a ton of places for people to live as well as to work and to play. Now, uh, that version of Epcot didn't happen after Walt passed away in 1966. The uh, company pivoted and the Walt Disney World Resort became the vacation kingdom of the world, as they like to call it. It was a theme park and uh, you know, we had a couple of hotels to start off with that there. But eventually, by the 1990s, Disney did get into residential real estate with Celebration, which was that town Disney built um, right on the periphery of the Walt Disney World Resort. Eventually it was de-annexed to Osceola County and uh, you know it's still there today. You know, going as strong as anything I suppose. Uh, but the really big development that uh, Disney did, not in terms of size uh, but in terms of housing prices, was and is Golden Oak, which is just down the road from Fort Wilderness in the Walt Disney World Resort. Again, all of the property is de-annexed so that Disney maintains control of the Reedy Creek Improvement District that the Florida legislature created for them back in the 60s. But, uh, you know, if you want a multi-million dollar home just a few minutes away from the Magic Kingdom where you can see the fireworks at night from, uh, from atop the, uh, the, the Four Seasons Hotel there, yeah, uh, Golden Oak will hook you up. Uh, I used to have someone in my family I could refer you to uh, for that sales, but she's not working there anymore. Anyway, so what is this new play that Disney is making into residential real estate? They are calling it Story Living by Disney, kind of a play on storytelling, except you're actually living this. And the first one is going to be called Cotino, and it's going to be located in uh, Rancho Mirage in the Coachella Valley, right here in Southern California. So instead of all these Florida developments, this time they're coming to California with this one. Huge property. I think it's something like 600 acres. Uh, they've got a partner, uh, DMB Development. I'm taking a look at the story that we've got right on the front page of Theme Park Insider right now, giving you all the details on this. Uh, and basically, this is going to be the first story living by Disney community. Um, no word on when it'll be open. Uh, Disney has showed some some video of this, and uh, basically, it's uh, you know it's desert right now. <laughs> I mean, it's sand, it's scrub. Uh, so we're looking you know years out before this thing is ready for any type of occupancy. Uh, as for what's going to be there, they're saying it's going to be a variety of housing uh, from you know, the high-end expensive estates, single-family homes, condominiums, uh, which you know, supposedly should be a little bit more affordably priced. They have said that at least one part of it will be uh, designated as a retirement community, 55 and older. Uh, so I don't know if Disney is envisioning uh, you know, Disney's villages here uh, in Southern California. Uh, but um, they do say that they will have properties available for uh, home buyers of all ages. Um, now there's going to be a club there that will be optional to join. There'll be dues, but Disney cast members are going to be running the uh, the association there. And you know the club will have various programming and activities. There'll be uh, a man-made lake. They'll have a beach on it. Uh, they'll sell so they'll sell day access to the beach for you know. You know, the public that wants to come visit or they'll be part of the club membership that will be available to, uh, to um, residents in the community. Uh, is this a good idea for Disney? Well, right now the real estate market is hot. Uh, who knows what it's going to be like by the time these things go up for sale. I imagine that there's some deal between Disney and the developer of this particular project that uh, will ensure Disney gets paid one way or the other. Disney says that they're scouting other locations across the country for future story living by Disney communities. So I'm sure every major develop, developer of a uh, planned uh, community has got Disney on speed dial right now trying to see if they can be a partner for one of their uh, projects. 
Uh, ultimately, I mean, we need more housing in the United States right now. If you look at uh, housing units completed, uh, the fact that real estate prices are rising so much but nobody's jumping in to build things is a real indictment that we do not have a functioning real estate economy in the United States right now. Things are very much broken. Um, part of this is the fault of, uh, you know, let's face it, you've got a bunch of hedge funds that are going in outbidding everyone for a lot of the available real estate on the market right now, pricing people out of being able to buy a home to live in. Uh, you've got a lot of speculators, you've got flippers, you've got people who are just using properties as investments, as Airbnbs, as vacation homes. Um, and you've got a lot of communities that simply aren't approving new developments. Uh, a lot of nimbyism. Uh, people don't want to have more housing in their community because they enjoy the ever-increasing house prices. And, you know, the fact that nobody else can buy in, forget about them. A lot of real selfishness out there. But if the Disney name can help some communities approve new housing developments, particularly big new housing developments that might not have gotten approval before without the Disney name, hey, bring it on. Now, this is something where apparently they've already gotten some site approval for this, so that's not really an issue. But Disney has an opportunity here to do something really important, to do the, site, the type of thing that Walt Disney was talking about in the 1960s and creating a new prototype for what a livable community can be in the future. And if that means throwing the Disney name around to get a variety of new types of developments approved to start getting more housing desperately needed build in, built in America again, I would welcome that. I have no idea, however, if that's what Disney has in mind or if Disney is perfectly happy attaching to their name to a bunch of other developers, planned urban community, uh, planned community developments, cashing a check and allowing the developers to just sell it off to every hedge fund or Airbnb owner out there. Um, cash grab or something really significant. I mean, time's going to tell. Right now, this is not one that uh, at first glance would look like something that could really help the obvious housing crunch in Southern California. But when you think about it, you know, if you're talking about thousands of new units and they haven't given us a specific number yet, but we're talking about the size here, we're clearly talking about thousands of new units. Um, that helps. I mean, think about all the people who've gone to remote work right now. I think there are a lot of people around the country that would be happy to move to a Disney branded community um, to do their remote work in, particularly in a place with, uh, you know, abundant sunshine and, uh, good weather, except for the summer, where there's air conditioning, at least, um, in Southern California. This is not the 1990s with Celebration anymore. So, like I said, there's a lot still to be learned about this uh, Story Living by Disney proposal, but there's a lot here that should get people talking about the very real issue of housing in America right now. If it takes, again, if it takes the Disney name to at least get people talking about what some of these issues are, because I mean, the problem is you've got too many people who bought in a long time ago who are perfectly happy to see the value of their home skyrocket. And they don't give a rip if, no, if millennials and Gen Z and you know, coming up eventually Gen Alpha can never afford to buy a home. They got theirs and everybody else can go lump it. They should have been born rich. I think that's a horrible attitude and I think things can be fixed. Unfortunately, the old property ladder, which I can hear people talking about, is broken. Um, you know, even the entry level stuff now is five, six, seven, ten times uh, what, you know, people's uh, you know, median salaries are in a community. It's just not affordable pretty much anywhere in America at this point for first time home buyers. Something needs to be done about that. You know, things like we need to talk about things like. Uh, unoccupied property taxes. I mean, housing should be for housing. If it's not, if someone's not living in a house, that's a failure. Um, you know, I'm not a huge fan of Airbnb. I think that's one of the things that's driving home prices up. And in fact, it's not even a deal for vacationers anymore with all the cleaning fees and extra fees people are tacking in there and the security, you know, the fact that you don't have security for reservations. Heck, a lot of people have gone back to hotels because they're a better deal now. And there's just no excuse for people to be buying up properties that could be someone's home and just you know renting them out for Airbnb. Uh, particularly these things if, that are getting built in Rancho Mirage. If, if they get in the hands of a bunch of just speculators who you know, rent them out for five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a night for Coachella and Stagecoach, you know, a few hundred dollars uh, a night uh, during the winter and then just leave them empty the rest of the time, 
that's not going to do any good for anybody. Um, these things, I mean, Disney's talking about this being part of the next chapter in people's lives. Well, that implies people need to live there, and Disney needs to do something to ensure that they're selling these properties to people who are actually going to live there. Um, you know, states can help encourage that with things like unoccupied property taxes, with putting progressive rates on property taxes, uh, not giving people property tax breaks on second and third homes like they get in California under the old Prop 13. Uh, a lot that could be done here and a lot that we can talk about here, but we need to talk about it. So frankly, I'm happy that Disney came out with this proposal because it gave me an opportunity to talk with you a little bit about this. I hope it gets you talking about how you know housing can be improved in communities across the country. You know, maybe it might even get some of you talking about how this sounds like kind of cool. Maybe I want to move to California and do this. Hey, I'm a California native. I love California. I think it's it's a great place to be. Uh, so I'm happy that Disney is is building a, a or partnering with somebody to build a big new development here. And, you know, I hope it leads to something positive. Like I said, um, I think this is a debate that we need to have and uh, something I'm looking forward to hearing people talk about in uh, the, uh, the weeks and months and years to come, as Josh Tamara said in uh, his introduction of this. Again, all this information is on the front page of ThemeParkInsider.com right now if you want to read more about, about uh, Cotino, the first Disney uh, living community that is planned for Rancho Mirage in California.